Hello YouTube, greetings from the Stop Motion Reviewer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the War for Cybertron Earthrise Grapple. I got this figure off of Amazon about a month ahead of its actual release date because I found it for about $55, but I had a $25 gift card, so I got it for the same value as a typical Voyager today. Upon getting this figure out of the box, I was actually surprised at the fact that this figure has very little hollow parts to it. There were times in the Siege line where I did feel like they were kind of flipping us off with how much hollow parts and how much they were basically showing them to everybody. I mean, Impactor is definitely the guiltiest among all of them, showing how much they're trying to do to get rid of all the plastic. I have to say that I am impressed by this truck mode. The applications of silver on the front of the bumper and everything else are really impressive. This isn't just a bland gray that they typically use in most of the toys that Hathro makes. This is actual, genuine, nice, reflective silver paint. I'm also very impressed by the amount of sculpted detail that there is just in the vehicle mode alone. It does have the little stabilizers on the side that would normally be useful when the crane isn't used, but they don't extend, unfortunately. As for vehicle articulation, it does include a crane that can both extend and retract. It can rotate 360 degrees. And you can flip out the little crane thing for a giant claw that can dangle when the crane is fully elevated. I have to say that I'm impressed by how much you managed to stick to the Generation 1 model of this figure. It feels like a G1 toy, but perfectly updated to meet modern articulation and modern tune accuracy and everything else. Taking a look at the transformation, I have to say it's a little bit of a bizarre story. The way that the crane backpack works is nothing shy of absolute engineering sorcery. The head starts way in the back of the vehicle mode, way, way in the back, and then six or seven panels pop out of absolute nowhere, explode, and then just all retract into this deep little backpack that barely protrudes off the back at all. The rest of the transformation is generally self-explanatory, it's primarily just a Generation 1 grapple, and I like the way that the feet managed to fold out to prevent the legs from being hollow. I really did think that they were going to do some kind of panel or something, where they were going to open up the leg, extend the leg, then a foot would come out of it, and it would be completely hollow plastic, but the foot just folds out from the leg very naturally and organically. Upon getting grappled in this robot mode, I have to say, I am very impressed with how Generation 1 screen accurate this thing is. It looks perfectly blocky, it's not too spiky, it's not too chunky, it's not too kibbly, it's just perfect. I have never seen anything get nailed so perfectly in my life. Grapple comes with a little basic blaster that came with his Generation 1 figure too, but that's not what I'm looking for. Besides, who needs hands when you've got a freaking grapple hook and a gun? I have to tell you that the way that the hands flip out, and still sticks to the siege line, but simultaneously being its own thing that's character accurate to grapple is just about my favorite thing about this figure. As for the way that the joints move on the figure, it is surprisingly poseable. I thought this thing being all chunky and boxy and everything else would really hinder articulation and make everything a kibbly, destructive nightmare, but this thing is surprisingly smooth. It's very stable, the backpack doesn't weigh anything down, and it's actually incredibly neat and compact and doesn't protrude in any way, shape, or form off the bat to be very annoying or anything. And the best part is, it doesn't hinder articulation at all. Nothing is inhibited by this thing. It just folds in nicely, and that's the first time we've ever gotten that on the grapple figure, considering there's only really been two formal retail releases that aren't masterpieces. I love how this thing manages to be one of the bigger, chunkier Voyagers that feels a little bit taller without being completely hollow. The fact that they didn't ha sacrifice engineering for quality or quality for engineering on this figure is just the perfect balance that I've been looking for for so long in the figures, because every one of them seems to have a hollow problem. Either that or it's just a kibbly disaster like the Nightbird mold or the Chromia mold or any of the Fembots. But altogether, this figure is a very, very solid 9.5 out of 10. I don't think we're going to get a more perfect grapple in the distant future, and I think that this is definitely the definitive Generations grapple of our time. This has been the Stop Motion Reviewer, and it has been my honor to be the first person on the internet to review this thing.